Hello, everyone. Welcome to Special in the Spotlight. And I'm very excited. I'm Mike Kenichi because tonight for the Derby Athletic Hall of Fame, we are going to announce class number six, the class of 2022. We've already had five classes. It's been such a pleasure to do this. And, uh, you know, the other thing I wanted to say as well is we started this around 2014 and we didn't really know what to expect, but we met one night in 2014 on a hot summer in August, and it was about maybe eight of us, and we talked about how we can make this work, would it work, and stuff like that. And it took us about a year to uh, name the first class, get everything going, but once we did, we really uh, have taken off with this, and it's hard to believe this is year number six. But I'm very happy to announce that tonight we are going to uh, – announced 10 new inductees to the Derby Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, we felt like 10 was the right, th right way to go because it just worked out. We're all 10. We're so close in voting, and we missed a year because of COVID, unfortunately. So this is going to be very special tonight. Uh, we're very proud to announce these 10 new inductees, and we really look forward to having a banquet, which hopefully will be sometime in either June or July. When I get more details, I'll also announce that. But uh, I wanted to bring on tonight uh, a guy who's always helped us throughout the process, given us advice. He's always been our master of ceremonies at the banquets, and he's always been gracious enough to announce the new class for us anytime we've needed it, and that's Jack Walsh. And uh, I'm going to kind of hand this over to Jack because Jack is going to announce the 10 new inductees for you to – C. And Jack, I want to thank you for doing this tonight, and uh, the floor is all yours. Well, Mike, it's a new new format, but I, I think, it, once again, I, I think you and your committee have done a, a fantastic job. I think this is a great thing, not, not just for uh, Derby High School, but I think for all, all the people of Derby to uh, learn more about, you know, some of the great athletes that, that have gone through Derby High School through the years. So you're certainly keeping uh, – a, a great legacy alive. So uh, I, I don't think people want to hear either of us talk. I think they want to hear who's in this yeah. year. And uh, I think, once again, the committee's done a tremendous job. I don't envy you the task of selecting uh, so many, uh, well, 10. Uh, when you think, though, you're talking about a history uh, that goes over 100 years. So right. 10 may sound like a lot, but when you think of the span of history, it's not. So why don't we get started right away? Because uh, I think the first selection might be considered the, the greatest baseball player in Derby High history, uh, if you look at the stats. But uh, the first selection tonight is Red Ahern, who was uh, a great three-sport athlete. But, uh, you know, when I look at his stats, I think what stands out more than anything else was uh, his incredible – baseball stats, uh, including the most strikeouts ever in a game for uh, a Derby High School pitcher. Um, Red was a graduate of the class of 1929. Yeah. Played football, baseball, and basketball. And excelled in each one. He was a quarterback on the football team. He was a pitcher and a great hitter as well for the baseball team. And he also played on the, the uh, basketball team, and his uh, classmates thought so much of him, he was voted as Derby High School class athlete for 1929. Red went on to uh, accept a baseball scholarship at Georgetown. And keep in mind, uh, that era, baseball was probably much bigger than it is today so when you think of uh, high school and college. Uh, and he... Though he went to Georgetown, he eventually left to play minor league baseball. So he was quite a guy and uh, I believe later in life became a teacher and maybe even a superintendent of schools. I'm not sure of that. Uh, but uh, again, he excelled as a quarterback uh, on you know great derby teams of that period of time. Uh, yeah, when you look at the stats, I, I think one of the interesting things is his uh, success against Shelton. On Thanksgiving Day, but uh, yeah. 
I, I laugh because uh, it certainly helps your family if you were an outstanding football player in that particular game because he was the, I guess, the unofficial MVP of the, the game in 1928. And for his play, listen to what he got for awards, okay? He got a pair of shoes from Saul Steinman, who did that for decades. Yeah. But uh, what really struck me, he got a ton of coal from the local coal company. You know, today it would be oil, and that would be worth a, a fortune. So uh, Red Ahern is our first uh, selectee this year, just an outstanding uh, athlete and an outstanding gentleman. Any comments you want to make, Mike? You know, just congratulations to Red. And that's the other thing that's fun about all this is when you research somebody way back like that. Uh, I think I mentioned this before in the past when we were researching one night, all the stuff we found on uh, Jim Foley, who got into the Hall of Fame last year. We couldn't believe the amount of stats and what he did in track alone was just unbelievable. And that's why going back and looking at these old Sentinels are so fun because you just see things that you may not be looking for and they just come out of nowhere. I think we're all waiting for the Sentinel to get digitized to make it a lot easier. Uh, I hope so. That. so. But, well, let's move on to our, our second selectee this year. One of the fastest athletes in, in Derby High history, uh, Jimmy Lewis, class of 1987. Uh, Jimmy was uh, an outstanding track man, uh, excelled in the 100 and 200 meter dashes. Not Excel isn't the right word. I think dominant would be yeah. the right word for, for what he did there. He also was an outstanding football player on the Derby High teams. And, you know, what struck me is the, the one game uh, against the Ansoni where he carried the ball 40 times, mm. 40 times. And yeah. you know, Jimmy wasn't the biggest guy in the world either. Of course, you had to chase him before you could hit him. Yeah. Uh, and that wasn't easy. Uh, again, 40 times for 226 yards. He won the Alvarello Trophy, the, the team where they were hustonically champs that year. Um, he was the best sprinter in the Hustonic League that, that year. Um, just, you know, an outstanding gentleman. I believe he lives in, in the South now, doesn't he? Yeah, I believe uh, Louisiana, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I remember seeing him at one of the banquets a couple of years ago. So, you know, it's always nice when uh, you see someone who remembers their roots and the importance of it. And certainly right. he's, he's a big part of, of the history of Derby High School sports, uh, outstanding gentleman on top of it. Right. Uh, our first female athlete is Tracy Gases Rondini, uh, class of 1979. Uh, 84, 84, actually. Oh, 84. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Wrong. Okay. yeah that's okay. Uh, Tracy uh, was a two-sport star in both basketball and softball and was a thousand-point scorer in basketball. Um, and interesting, she got her thousand point in a big upset win over East Haven. Yeah. Uh, in uh, softball, she was all Valley. 83, oh, 83 and 84 in basketball and softball. And she was an all-state softball player also in 83 and 84. Uh, so our first female athlete this year, Tracy Grazes Rondini. Yeah. You know, I think our next two selections have something in common in terms of their undefeated records as Derby High School quarterbacks. Yeah. Rather incredible when you think about it. But I, I think the first one may be the, the most underappreciated or unrecognized quarterback in Derby High history, and that would be Bunny Bazek, class of 1970. Bunny never lost a game as a Derby High School varsity player. In fact, I think the record shows he might have lost one game as a freshman or something along the way, but it was rare for Bunny to lose. Uh, Interesting, he was a he was a two year starter at quarterback, including the obviously the the nineteen sixty nine state championship team, but he made all Hussatonic league as a defensive back, and I don't yeah. think people yeah. recognize what a great all around athlete he was. 
Uh, he had 17 TDE passes his senior year. And, you know, Derby was not known for throwing the ball back then. They would literally just run you over. They were that strong. Yeah. But, but he had 17 TDE passes uh, for a team that was number one in the state, the first Derby High team that was number one in the state. Yeah. What also people don't remember is that Bunny was a great basketball player as well. The Derby High School basketball team that year went to the semifinals of the state tournament, and I believe they got beat by Walt Luckett and uh, Colby. And Walt wasn't too bad. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. But Derby went down to the wire in that game. Bunny went on to, to play college ball as well. And, again, just I, I think he's one of the most underappreciated and unrecognized for, for what he accomplished at Derby High School came from a great football family too right our, our next is brian pagliero derby high class of 1974 and he can also say that for his last two years he went undefeated mm -hmm. uh, he was the quarterback of derby uh, including the again the state championship team and obviously he's one of two pagliero's now in the hall of fame because john who was his cousin was a member of the inaugural class. Right. Ryan was, uh, you know, the quarterback for two 10 and 0 Derby High School football teams. Uh, quite a quite a record. He was also a baseball player. I didn't even re remember that, but he was two and 0 as a starting pitcher for the baseball team, which also qualified for the state tournament that year. Yeah. So, Ryan Pagliero, class of '74. Uh, our next uh, nominee, not nominee, our next selectee is Eddie McManus, Derby High in 1971. Uh, Eddie was just, uh, you know, a big guy with a big heart and an yeah. outstanding player. You know, he was a defensive end on the football team. He was an all-state player at Derby High School. He was also all Hoosie, all Valley. He started for two years, including uh, on the 1969 state championship team. Yeah, uh, he, he was a great defensive player, and he also scored nine touchdowns during his senior year. Yes, and, and he was just a, a hard-nosed football player on the field, but off the field, you would never know it. Yeah, uh, yeah. he's one of those people who would be classified a, as a gentle giant, I think, but a great guy, and also a great basketball player. Um, you know, the, the basketball team was outstanding when Eddie was there. He averaged double figures, led the team in rebounds. And, and believe me, if Eddie ever said a pick on you, you'd be lucky to be standing after he said it. <laughs> he was solid. Yeah. Um, again, a two-sport athlete, excellent in both. He had the opportunity to, to play college ball but decided to, to stay home. Uh, he was also an Alvarola Award winner. Yeah. Uh, which is a special honor in Derby. Um, I think you, you summed it up. Coach Steve Filippo called Eddie a coach on the field. Right. Yeah. Just an outstanding gentleman who continues to give back to Derby High Sports to this day. You know, just outstanding gentleman. Yeah. Eddie McManus, class of 1971. Our next uh, is Linda Binkowski. Derby High, class of 1979. Again, an incredible basketball player. Uh, she played for Bev Moran. She averaged over 20 points a game in the 1979 season and had over 1,000 points in her career, actually 1,154. Uh, she was the first female to hit the 1,000-point marks in Derby High School history. Right, and keep in mind this was before there was a three point line, so they were all two point. Yeah. Uh, she's third overall, she made all valley basketball three straight years. She was all his timely honorable mention two years. She was also a, an outstanding student as she made the prestigious and I mean prestigious New Haven Tap Off Club Scholar Athlete Award. She was all New Haven County first team for class MS. Uh, she was the first female to win the Derby Police Union Scholar Athlete Award. Yeah. Um, she also won, and this, I, I, I've never heard of this award, but uh, she was the Francis Harp Callahan Memorial Trophy winner 
her senior year at Derby High School. In softball, she was all Valley first team as a second baseman. Uh, she was also Housatonic second team uh, during her senior year. So again, another well-rounded student athlete. And I think the other thing too is that was in the early stages of Derby girls sports. So she really kind of, in a lot of ways, set the tone for future female athletes in Derby. And she was probably the first superstar that Derby girls sports had. Right. When you think about it, they, you know, Derby High School really didn't have much in the way of sports for females for a long time. They, interestingly enough, in some of my research, they did have uh, girls basketball back in the 20s. And yet when yeah. I went to school in the 60s, I don't remember any girls sports at, at all. at Derby right. High School. So this was a renaissance for, for Derby and certainly Linda was one of the pioneers. Right. Okay. Moving on, our eighth selectee, Dave Steck, 2002. And, you know, when you look at his wrestling st statistics, it's just incredible. Dave was a three-time three -time Class S wrestling champ. Uh, the only year he wasn't the champ was his freshman year, and that's only because he was a runner-up. So an amazing yeah. uh, statistic. And his record, look at this. In four years at Derby as a varsity wrestler, his record was 137 wins and 15 losses. Yeah. He won the SEC championship. And keep in mind, that's all classes, twice. Uh, he's fourth all-time in Derby with wins. He's fifth all-time with a, a total of 688 points. And coming from a small school, He's also a two-time state open champion, which means the right. best of the best in the entire state, regardless of size. So Dave Steck, class of 2002. Our ninth is Tommy Palmieri, Derby High School, class of 1973. And, you know, another one of those guys who uh, was played bigger than uh, his size. Uh, he was he played football varsity football for three years. Uh, he had 318 yards as a sophomore, 670 as a junior, and close to 800 as a senior. He also scored 15 touchdowns as a Seymour. Uh, one of his best games was uh, against Seymour. He had 130 yards, and that was a big win for Derby because they came back from a deficit to win 16-14. Um, he was also two-time All-Valley, two-time All-Hoosie, and a second-team All-State player. And he was quite uh, a track man, too, another one of the, the speedsters at Derby. Uh, like Jimmy Lewis, he, uh, he was a specialist in the 100- and 200-yard dashes where he excelled. Um, he helped the track team finish 9-5 and five his senior year, which was the first – or the best record since Derby's uh, 1960 team. So, again, uh, outstanding football player and track and field star at Derby. Right. And our 10th uh, and last, but certainly not the least uh, selecting this year, is Jeff Rice, 1985. Uh, Jeff was a, an incredible football player. Anybody who saw him play, he was just one tough nut, very hard to bring down. And he was a machine. Yeah. He was a machine. I mean, catch this. He averaged, averaged 35 carries a game his senior year, uh, including earlier we said 40 was uh, remarkable. He had 45 carries for 300 yards and went against Seymour. And I remember being there that day, and I think most people will remember it as the fog game. Yeah. If you were stands, you could hardly see him. And I think maybe that helped him because I think the Seymour players couldn't find him to tackle him. He was just unbelievable that day. Uh, you have a quote here. One of the opponents uh, said, hitting Rice was like stepping in front of a train frame running downhill. So he was no shrinking violet. He'd run over you as well as run around you. Right. Uh, 
He finished the 83 season with over 1,000, 1,100 yards rushing, and in his career accumulated over 3,000 yards rushing. That's yeah. just a, an amazing number. Um, he, he was a, all, a two-time all Hoosie selection and an Alvaro Trophy Award winner. So that's our class of 2022. 10 outstanding athletes who really made an impression, not just in Derby, but around the state for their accomplishments. And, you know, I want to commend the, the committee because, uh, again, I think it's a very difficult job to narrow down the list and come up with such a outstanding choices every year. So any comments about the, the group, Mike? I think you guys, again, did an outstanding job. Well, um, I believe now with these 10, that brings us to 50. So, we now have 50 inductees in the six year run of this, which is phenomenal. And uh, that's really, you know, something to be proud of because like I said, we really didn't know how this thing would turn out when we first started it, but we've fortunately enough inducted 50 athletes into this hall of fame now. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank the committee, Jen Maffe, Ray Silvernail, Brent Cavallero, Tom Abel, Danny Shea, Walt Paisadecki, Bob Ahern, Fran De Janeiro, and Steve Owens, because, you know, without the committee, you just can't do this. You know, it doesn't happen. So I really want to thank them because they're a big reason why this has been successful. I know you guys do a lot of work in finding uh, the information, the background information, a lot of hours spent in the library looking through those old sentinels and yeah. talking to people. You know, it's again, it's too bad that the, the Sentinel isn't indexed so you could go back very easily. But I think we'd all end up spending hours and hours reading those old Sentinels and the stories because they're, right. they're phenomenal. Now, Mike, you're not announcing it tonight, but you're going to have one more award that the committee gives every year. You just want to mention that quickly? Yeah, uh, the Bill Pucci Service Award, which we also uh, gave out the first class uh, in honor of a uh, longtime Derby sports contributor and athlete, Bill Pucci. So we've had five winners with that. Uh, Bill obviously won it the first year. Jim Mascola was the second recipient, then Don Piscaneri, uh, Bev Moran, and then Red Clinch. So we will pick somebody in the next couple of weeks. And when we do, we'll make that announcement as well. But we felt that was important to give that special award out because so many people have given back to Derby sports. And I think it's important to honor them as well. And Mike, I, I think you guys should be, and gals should be commended also because uh, you also award some scholarships. You want to tell us about that? Yes. Uh, each year we give a scholarship to a Derby high school, male and female, student athlete who has demonstrated great character leadership and has been outstanding in the classroom and we try to you know give them something an award each year to recognize them for all their great accomplishments and uh we will be giving that out soon too and we will make that announcement but we felt that was very important to you know the derby high school uh especially marty pasquale when he was principal was always very supportive to us as was a uh, Rachel Artais and uh, the Board of Ed as well. They've been always supportive, you know, people like Jen Caruso, uh, Kenny Marcuccio, Jim Gilday, uh, Melissa Mangiolo. So we wanted to make sure that we did we gave something back to those students because we felt they deserved it. That's fantastic. Uh, again, it fits in well with, with your mission. And uh, I'm sure the students can appreciate a little extra scholarship money with the cost of college and all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, I, I just commend you. You guys have done a fantastic job. I do want to get in a quick plug that uh, Derby also has uh, a citywide Hall of Fame, and yeah. it's now accepting nominations. There are only three that are selected for that each year. It's not tied to sports. It's just tied to the overall history of the city. And you can go to the old Derby website and make a nomination if, if you want for that as well. So it's, you know, it's great that the city recognizes the important people, places, and events of the, of the past. So, And it's very uh, cool to read up on so many of those people because you just learn so much about them when that you never realized that, you know, I mean, I 
for years, I didn't realize that. I'll just use Brian Dennett. He is an example. Big time actor, you know, big in the FX, the series films, stuff like that. And uh, he also played Bobby Knight in uh, the Bobby Knight documentary. And uh, he was from Derby. And I believe he was also related to the late Mo Monahan. They were cousins. So just these little things you find out when you read all this history of Derby. So I think it's important that people really, you know, take the opportunity to look into these people because it's a great thing that you guys do for that. Well, Derby is the smallest city in the state, but it's got a lot of great history. And as I said, you're keeping it alive and telling that story with Derby High School athletes. So congratulations again. Well, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you coming on. And uh, again, thank you and congratulations to this year's inductees. Um, in a couple of days, we will have a full biography of each inductee up on the Facebook page and stay tuned because there will be a banquet to follow. And as soon as we have details, we'll make that announcement. So thank you again and congratulations to this year's inductees. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome.